Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today I'm going to do another work in progress video and do a little of that compression. And I wanted to give you a chance to see some of the hot wire foam factory tools in work, uh, in, in use, I should say. Uh, what you see before you here is the um, base, you know, layers for the Weathertop Mountain. Um, I told you I'd follow that project through with you. And uh, basically, um, based on the suggestions that I got from some of the feedback on the video, one of them being to set the center of the hill back away from one of the edges, uh, this allowed me to build it slightly higher than I had originally planned. Currently, the foam is stacked about seven inches high. Um, the base is about 40 inches across at this point. And uh, basically what I'm looking, what you're looking at here is the front half of the mountain. The back half is uh, over on the side. And we'll see if I can get to that work today as well. Uh, the uh, foam has been glued down. Uh, also added some screws in it to uh, hold it a little bit more rigid as it's going to take time for the center of the glue areas to dry because the sheets are so large. And uh, I've had it sitting over the weekend with about 200 pounds of weights on it, pressing it all down, and hopefully setting it up nice and solid. I did a couple test cuts before I uh, started the video today just to see how it was doing, and the glue on the interior edges appears to be dry, so it looks like it's safe to carve. So I'm going to start that work today. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to take me, and I did consider going with rough cuts on it with a, uh, say, like a coping saw, something where I could make some quicker work of it early on. But then I realized one of the things I'm always afraid of is cutting off more pieces than I really intended to. And so I think a slightly slower approach where I can analyze it as I go through it is going to uh, ensure that I don't remove areas that I want to keep. Uh, the basic plan at the moment is to have the whole front slope uh, be fairly accessible for miniatures. You will notice a couple areas where the foam sets up a little bit higher. So there's going to be a couple spots where I'm going to either put paths going sideways and up around the back, or a couple areas where I'm going to be putting some rock faces and some cliff work in a couple key areas to kind of vary up the overall appearance and playability of it, as well as to uh, provide some, um, some compensation for areas where the boards are a little bit too short to have a gradual slope all the way up to the top. When we get to the back side of this project, you'll see that I've pushed the top of the hill towards the back side, and the entire back side is going to be cliffed with uh, cast rocks, and I've made some latex molds of some rocks that I'm going to be using, and maybe we'll include that in a future video. But for today, we're going to be hacking this up with some hot wire tools. I'm going to be using the six inch hot wire knife from the Hot Wire Foam Factory. Uh, this is a nice long blade, and it's going to be able to give me some deep cuts relatively quickly with it. And then later on, I'll be going in with the freehand router, and you'll see that when that comes out. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's carve Weathertop.
that's an hour's worth of work. Um, making my progress about a rate I expected. Uh, a couple things of note. Um, noticing that because you know the whole surface wasn't glued down, a couple spots are popping up. So I want to inject a little glue in there, put in a couple screws to hold some things down. The um, the carving of the erosional areas is sort of I you know I don't see the finished project in my mind. I kind of let it grow on its own organically. I try to just let it grow slowly so I don't you know let it grow in the wrong direction. But um, I really like this feel here where I can carve into the valleys and then create these these outcroppings. Um, and I think it's going to help create an irregular edge around the edge of the board, which is going to be important for not making it look like a square. Um, I'm expecting that when I foam coat this and when I um, styroplast, I, I'm going to styroplast all the bottoms and the sides and the backs of these, each corner. As you can see, these are already cornered. Um, so I think that's going to produce enough rigidity to make sure that these don't break off in the future. Um, but I'll have to judge that and maybe trim them in a little bit in case they're projecting a little bit too far. So. Um, I will um, continue carving this and maybe um, shoot a uh, future segment like this to show you how the progress is coming along, but I wanted to give you a chance to watch me do the first cuts and uh, see um, particularly how the um, hot wire tools work. I can't say enough about the um, freehand router. It really allows for a lot of variability in cutting. If you haven't been to the hot wire foam factory and checked out their um, hot wire cutting tools, you might want to check them out. I'll put a link in the description of this video. Um, and of course, I've done an intro to some of these tools and um, consider this a follow-up review of this. It's nice having the six-inch knife and the hot wire and a uh, freehand router as a combo because each does a slightly different thing, but it's nice to be able to switch back and forth between them depending on the kinds of cuts you're looking for and the speed you're looking to cut. So I um, hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll be back soon with more.